Hello all, welcome back to the channel. Today, I thought I would do some bonus content on Nakamichi. You might have seen my video on the BX150 on, on uh, when was it, Saturday? But uh, as it turns out, I have some bonus content for you on this unit that I was trying to figure out what to do with it. So I figured maybe I'd make this video and we'll talk a little bit about Nakamichi my plans for Nakamichi on the channel, and uh, finally at the very end I'll give you another demonstration on how this thing sounds with recording because it's really, really fantastic. For a two-head unit, I can't believe how good that thing sounds. But uh, yeah, what we're going to do first before we get into the Nakamichi stuff is we'll talk a little bit about the other projects I've got going on on the channel. and. Uh, previous projects and whatnot, and yeah, I've got this great big shelving set up here, and I'm probably going to need another one of these shelves to go right next to this one, where the uh, console stereo is now. i got to clean all this stuff up and finish that guy up, but uh, yeah, as far as cassette decks go, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's coming in and what I'm going to be doing, and Hopefully trying to figure out exactly where Nakamichi fits in all this. Obviously the Nakamichi BX150 is sitting right there. It needs a little more work done on it now. It's got some issues with tape jamming. We'll get into that in a future video. Not sure when I'll get to it. But uh, yeah. Right up top here we've got the VCR shelf. At least that's what I'm calling it for now. This here is my original HRS 4700U, the one I bought in 1992 for 750 bucks. It still works for the most part, but I've been cribbing parts off of it to fix this guy up here, which is the one I got off eBay for 200 bucks uh, a couple of years ago. Fully working, no issues. This up here is the 6800, also fully working, no issues, but it took a lot to get that one going. And I kind of wish I'd done that for the channel, but uh, I didn't have a channel at the point at that point, so whatever. This is my latest acquisition in, in the VCR lineup. This is a BRS605U. It's a duplication Super VHS machine. And uh, this will be on the channel eventually. I don't know exactly when. I'm waiting on parts for it because as it turns out, as it sits right now, it can't even be test it out so I've got to order some parts for it or rather I've got to wait for some parts to come in before I can even find out whether or not that thing was a good idea. It was 150 bucks so I hope it was a good idea. It probably wasn't. It came from a university someplace but uh, yeah enough about that. Over here we've got the TAC V770. That's my very first TAC and if you remember Back in previous videos, I said that Nakamichi wasn't my brand back in the day. It was always TAC. So yeah, this one's going to be a birthday project. So around the end of November, you'll be seeing this one on the channel, I hope. Below that, we've got the uh, JVC TDX501. This is an auto-reverse unit. Probably won't be keeping this once I get done with it, but we'll see what happens. Don't remember offhand what was wrong with it. And uh, over here, we've already talked about the BX150. Jeez, I can't believe I got that thing for only 120 bucks, but I did. And I'll probably never find a deal like that as good as good as that again for Nakamichi, but well, one can hope. Anyhow, below that, RCA MTR 118. This is part of their Dementia line of products from back in the day. And uh, fully working, no issues with it at all. Sounds amazing because it's got Nishikon Muse capacitors in it now. But uh, it's also got a fair bit of headwear, so I don't know if I'll be keeping this one or not. It's I'm kind of 50-50 on it because my parents gave me this for free, so I kind of want to keep it. Below that, the Sony FX5C. 
hasn't been used since the Nakamichi was put together and restored, which was about five months ago. So, yeah, it kind of sits there looking pretty right now, or rather, not so pretty. Most likely, it'll end up being a parts deck for something else at some point. I'd still like to get the FX7, which is two or three models above this. But uh, the issue with the FX7 is it's a very, very unique deck in the fact that it has no belts, it's quartz lock, it's direct drive, and it's two head. And unfortunately, the quartz lock direct drive stuff kind of counts against it in that because uh, most people who sell the FX7 want three or four hundred bucks for it, and I'm sorry, it's not worth it. If you're going to ask me for 400 bucks for a Sony, it has to be the TCK777, the 666, or the 555. I'm not forking out that kind of money for an FX7. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Moving down, more Sony. This is my grandparents' TC FX, or, sorry, TCK45. Major project is going to happen on this in December. I'm going to make this the uh, Christmas and New Year's content, I hope. Below that, this is a TCK55. It's actually the next model up from this, or one of the next models up. It's period correct, both available in 79 and 80. The only thing against it is it doesn't have the uh, wooden sides, and you'll know why I got this when you uh, tune in on Saturday and, uh, yeah, see how the final video on this ended up. So, yeah, this is the TCK61. I don't want to say too much about it now because I'll be ruining my video on Saturday, but, uh, yeah, this guy needed a lot of help, and it's not over yet. Saturday's video is, well, you'll see. These two guys use the same transport, so you can probably guess why I got the 55 now, but uh, the 55 is actually in really good shape, so I don't know. I don't like that it doesn't have the wooden sides, but uh, we'll see where it goes when I get to this video. This is probably a January video right there, because yeah, I'm buying stuff into, for, into January now. I've got two decks incoming that you guys haven't seen yet. There's a DR... Uh, I'm getting my carts before my horses again. It's a Denon DR M3 direct drive, three head, automatic bias. I can't wait to get that one, but it's not here yet. And there's a Technics coming in. We'll get into that one later, probably January. It's nothing too special, but uh, it's got DBX on it, so it's kind of special. Over here, we've got this Nico unit. That's probably going to be coming up soon. I don't know exactly when. Maybe towards the end of October. Maybe early November. I don't know. I'm not real thrilled about this unit. I probably will not be keeping that. Because uh, it's auto-reverse for one thing. And for another thing, it's got no mode controls for the auto-reverse. So you just leave this thing playing and it'll just keep cycling over and over and it will never stop. At least I think that's how that one works. But uh, yeah, I'll get it going and see what it's like and see if I want to keep it or not. And down here we've got the Uptonica RT6505, the one that's so badly worn out that it's not worth restoring. I still have yet to find another deck I can use this for parts on, but uh, I'm looking. I'm just trying to find something. It's not easy. Anyhow, that's it for the tape decks, I think, on this row of shells. Underneath here, we've got the uh, that Fisher receiver that had a blown fuse in it. I probably should get into that some more and try and figure out why the tuner doesn't work, but there's no reason for me to ever try to get the tuner working in that thing, so not a priority. And my Sherwood turntable is back under there as well, because I don't have a good place for it yet. But, uh, yeah, this receiver here, the Sony GX67ES, this is going to be my bedroom stereo. It's going to be powering my DCM speakers, 
and probably the Sansui tape deck will be paired with this, as well as that Sherwood turntable. So that's my plans for that. So let me shut off real quick and we'll go talk about what's in the office here. Okay, here we are in the office and this is where the carver is right now. The TD-1700, which is a relabeled Iowa ADF-880. ADF I just about bagged an ADF-780 for a hundred bucks the other day. I'm real pissed off that I didn't get it, but uh, what are you going to do? The 780 is the next one down from this. Same transport, same heads, it just doesn't have the remote control capabilities that, uh, that the 880 and the Carver 1700 have. So, yeah. I don't know when I'll be getting to, to this guy again, but uh, as you can see right here, I have all of the parts I need to do the modification on this, and I can't wait to do that. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. And up here, this is that Sanyo turntable I did a video on. I just need to get rid of that. That's all there is to it on that one. It's just not a very good turntable. I found this little uh, cassette storage thing at a uh, thrift store not too long ago, and this is where all my uh, my blanks are and some of my pre-recorded tapes are for the channel. These are all my Sony S Metal SR tapes here. I think I've got nine of them, with eight of them being for the channel and one for display. And I've also got the TDK D90s here for uh, normal bias tapes in there. So yeah, that's about all there is in here. I'm working hard at cleaning out the office so my main computer can go in here. But uh, over here, this is my latest boombox acquisition. We'll get to this. This has a heck of a lot wrong with it. I wanted to buy a broken one, and good lord did I ever get a broken one. So, that's going to be fun. But uh, yeah, eventually my whole office will be cleaned out, and the whole main computer will be right here. And right up here, eventually, will be the Nakamichi BX150, because that's my main playback deck. Well, when it works. At the moment, it doesn't work, so... Yeah, like I said, video coming on that. Okay, let's change locations one more time. All right, we are now in my not so clean bedroom, which I also need to clean out. But uh, as you can see, that's the main computer right there. That's where I do all my editing and uh, photography work. And uh, that's probably gonna get upgraded soon because a certain someone was an idiot and when he upgraded the Xeon processors in that machine, he dropped one of them corner first into a socket. So this machine is now not so stable anymore. Don't get me wrong, when it starts up and I can get it to, to run, it stays working for days and weeks with perfect stability. It's just when you start it up first time, more often than not these days, it gives you the five beep codes of death for one of the CPUs, which happens to be the one that got dropped corner first into the socket. So, yeah, not a fun time. So, finally going to have to upgrade this. It's eight years old, that build, so probably about time to do it anyway. But uh, right here is where the Sansui is right now. This is a relabeled Hitachi DX8 with a few modifications from Sansui in it. And I am really trying hard to like this thing, guys. I really am. It's got a great look to it. It's in better shape cosmetically than the uh, RCA MTR-118, which is the DX6 variant. It's just one model below this on the Hitachi scale of things. Hitachi does have a DX10 above this. I might try for that one, but it's going to have to come from Japan. I'm pretty sure of it. So, uh, yeah. I just cannot seem to ever get myself used to how this thing sounds. It sounds okay, but uh, that's about as far as it goes for me. But I don't think I can get rid of this either. And the reason why is because it's auto-reverse, three heads, with off-tape monitoring 
and it records in both directions. Not even a Nakamichi Dragon can do that. So, yeah, this is going to be my main uh, bedroom cassette deck, I think. Just because I'd like to have an auto-reverse machine for that. Just so I can play tapes while I'm going off to sleep and... Uh, and I can just remote shut everything off once the thing stops playing and all all of that. And yeah, of course this is where the Excelia is as well because uh, my main recorder has to be around the main computer because this does all the recording for the channel. And uh, yeah, that's about all it does these days is it just records. And uh, yeah. I do hope to get the next model up one of these days, and coincidentally, I happen to have a brochure right here that actually shows it to you. So there it is. There's the XK009. This brochure is from 1991, so uh, the 009 was on its way out by then. Reason being, they were coming out with the Dolby S models in the XK7000 and I believe there's an XK9000 as well, but uh, unfortunately those machines tend to be Nakamichi level pricing when you find them. So uh, I'm not really sure I'm interested in those models. What I do want is a pair of these. These are very commonly regarded as some of the best cassette decks in the world. These are Nakamichi killers to a lot of people. And I don't know that for sure, but uh, I'm looking forward to finding out. But uh, yeah, you can see there's no 007 in this brochure anymore, nor is there a XK005. And that's because those models had been phased out by then. All that was left was the 009. And you can't even find an ADF-880 in here anymore, or the ADF-1000. So yeah, you've got the, eight, you've got the F800. That's a good one to get. But uh, yeah, the rest of these in this brochure, really not that interesting. I'm really not that interested in low-end Iowa. It's just when, when I think Iowa, I want to go right to the good stuff. And that includes the double cassette decks, which I'm really not interested in. But uh, yeah, that's an Iowa catalog from 90 to 91, so yeah. Okay, so let's sit down at the main computer now and we'll talk Nakamichi for a while. Okay, so for this part of the video, we're going to be at CassetteDeck.org and we're just going to go through all the different Nakamichi models and we'll talk about which ones I want, which ones I'm planning for, what level of subscribers of the channel, and yeah, which ones are overrated and which ones are underrated. and Yeah, we'll just go through them all and see what's what. So, in terms of the next channel level, I would say the next level would probably be somewhere around a thousand subscribers now, which was originally the the intent for the BX150. But obviously I've already done that for 500 subscribers, so what do I do now for 1,000? Well, I don't think it's going to be anything too special yet. We'll see. It depends on what I can find and what prices look like at the time. So I could see doing a 480 or a 480Z. I would prefer the 480Z. This is a two-head machine. This uses the classic Nakamichi transport, which is something I really need to get into if I want to keep servicing these things. I need to know exactly how this transport works as well as the one that we found in the BX150 because... Uh, well, I just like to know how things work, so anyway, that's the that's the hope. So 480Z has diffused resonance transport, whatever that means. IC logic, which whatever that means. Pressure pad lifter. That intrigues me. What that does is it pushes up on the pressure pad that's inside a cassette in order for the deck itself to take over for the tensioning over the tape and uh, yeah it just gets the pressure pad out of the way i don't have one right now that actually has a pressure pad lifter so i'm kind of curious as to how that works silent mechanism we'll take their word for it 
Double capstan, well, it would have to be if there's a pressure pad lifter. And dual capstans, yeah, same thing. Kind of the same thing, anyway. One capstan's bigger than the other. Anyway, I'd like to get a 480Z, because they do Dolby C on it, but uh, unfortunately, prices are ridiculous on these, just like every other Nakamichi, so... Whether or not I'll actually end up with one of these or not, good question. Could be a 480, could be a 481, could be a 482, could be any of these six models. At least I think there are six. Can I count today? One, seven, 24, six. Yeah, I can count. Anyhow, I could also see doing one of the 580 series models for a thousand subscribers. I would prefer the three head models, of course, but uh, good luck getting one of them for a half decent price. Last time I saw one of these, it was well over $300 on eBay. I just don't know about eBay prices. They're just utterly insane. So I don't know if there's a better source for Nakamichi tape decks other than eBay, but uh, if there is, I haven't found it yet. Anyhow, on the 600 series, we've got one of my Grail decks on this level. I'm not talking about the 600 or the 602. I don't like these. I'm not interested. I don't want these. Please don't offer these to me. I'm not interested. Well, you can offer one to me for nothing, but uh, you guys all want money for, for Nakamichi, so... Yeah, I'm not expecting anything there, but... Uh, any one of these six units I would take, but is the 682ZX, that's one of my Grail machines. I'm not sure if I would pay over four figures for one of these things, but uh, high three figures, maybe. We'll see what happens there. As for the 700s, not really interested in any of these, but I kind of like the looks of these two here, the 700ZXE and ZXL. I might take these. I generally don't like these front-loading, tall-body thingamadoodles, but uh, they do look good. I'll give them that. Now, as far as the 1000 series decks go, a lot of people consider this deck right here to be the best cassette deck in the world. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I've never had one. I've never heard one. I've never seen one. I'm not even interested in these models at all. Especially the ZXL Limited, which is probably fifteen or twenty thousand bucks. I'm not spending that kind of money on a tape deck ever. So, yeah, don't look for the thousands on my channel anytime soon. Now, down here in the BX series, we've done the BX 150, so there's no reason to do the 300, 100, or 125. The 300 is just a three-head version of the 150 anyway, with off-tape monitoring, I think. Let's check. Let's see. Yes, it does off-tape monitoring. So, yeah, that would be a good one, but I'm not interested. I've got the 150. That's enough for me. 125 is just the 150 with a... With a, uh, you know, a, a analog tape counter here. It's It doesn't have the digital one that that mine has. And the 100 is the same thing as the 125 and the 150, except it's only Dolby B, so forget it. But uh, I could see the BX1 or the BX2 for a thousand subscribers. I would prefer the BX2, and I would very much prefer to be in, in the silver finish here, because I would love to have one of these silver finished Nakamichi units. That would be so awesome. But yeah, there's nothing too special about these BX units either, so I ought to be able to get one of these for under 200 bucks. I would hope so anyway. They're just too darned expensive otherwise. So, back in the main menu here, we've got these Cassette Deck 1, 1 1.5, 1 Limited, and 2. I don't want these. I don't like them. They look terrible. These are... As you see here, 91 and 92 series decks. They look like they come out in the they, like they came out in the early 90s. I don't like the way these look at all. I don't want them. 
Not interested. Now the CR series. One of these is also a Grail unit for me. Not the CR1 or CR2, obviously. I'm not interested in either one of those. CR3, I would consider. CR4, I would consider. CR5, I would consider. But all three of these, I would sell as soon as I was done with them. This is the one I want here. This is the one I really want. In fact, this is the top of the line for me when it comes to Nakamichi, above the dragon. So, yeah, I want one of these bad. And as you can see here, they retail for 1800 bucks back in the day. And good luck finding one now for less than four figures because they're big money. So, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to be able to finally get this model, but uh, it's probably going to be for the 100,000 subscribers or maybe even the million subscribers mark. Not that I would ever get to a million subscribers. I very much doubt that. I just don't have the personality for it. But, uh, yeah. Next up are the DR series. I'm not interested in any single one of these. Even the DR-10, because look at this, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, these are too new. I'm not interested in any cassette deck this new. I'm sure they're good, but I'm just not interested. But at least they look good again. They look a heck of a lot better than those uh, early 90s units that we were looking at. Next up, the Dragon. What can I say about this? Available from 82 to 93. 11 years this model was on the market, and for some reason everybody thinks this is the top of the line for cassette decks ever. I don't, and here's why. This is an auto-reverse machine. And you've heard me say this before, but auto-reverse machines are compromised. Always. Even this one. Now, this is probably the best sounding auto reverse cassette deck ever made and it deserves accolades for that i would take one it's just that because everybody thinks this is the top of the line for all cassette decks they want four five six seven eight thousand dollars for these things and no i'm not paying that not for one of these not for auto reverse never for auto reverse you're talking that kind of money it's got to be that CR7 up there. I'm not spending that kind of money on a dragon, ever. Not happening. Not happening at all. Now the LXs. Yes, I would take one of these. In fact, I would take the LX3 as a thousand subscriber special tape deck. I would love to have one of these. But uh, yeah, I would prefer the LX5. Of course I would, because it's a three head. So yeah, this one looks real good to me. It's not direct drive like the CR7 is, but uh, it'd be fine, I'm sure. Now the MR1 and MR2, I've seen an MR2 for sale in Calgary. They were asking way too much money for it because of course they were, but uh, these are the professional ones. I'm not interested, just not interested at all. Because these are the professional ones, they're going to be ridden, ridden hard and put away wet. So, they're going to be worn out by the time I would ever get to one of them. So, not really that interested at all. So, now the UDAR machines. The RX-202, 303, and 505. Do I want one of them? Yes and no. Here's why, or rather, here's why no. No, because these are extremely expensive when you find them. And basically what these are, are BX series units with auto reverse. They've got this little mechanism that flips the tape around for you, and they look cool doing it, but uh, the RX-505 here, that is a BX-300 with auto reverse. That's all it is. It's really overrated when you find one of these. At least that's what I think. You might disagree. That's okay. No, nobody has to agree with me, but uh, yeah, these were available for nine years, almost as long as the dragon was. I would honestly prefer one of these to a dragon if the dragon can't be found for a half-decent price, but uh, 
In terms of the UDAR units, I would rather have a have a have a have a way of talking properly. I would rather have a 202 and be done with it. Just for the cool factor alone, because in terms of sound quality, I don't think the 505 is really worth what people ask for them these days. So Moving on to our last models, the ZX-5, ZX-7, and ZX-9. There are two models in here I want, and it's not the ZX-5. A lot of people think this is the top of the line for Nakamichi, right here, the ZX-7. And I'm not exactly sure why, because it's not direct drive, but uh, I kind of get it. It looks like a phenomenal tape deck, and... It's period correct. This is the kind of years I'm looking for in cassette decks. 81 to 84, early 80s. But uh, yeah, the one I really want most is the ZX-9. Direct drive, double capstan, three heads, discrete, which means you can adjust the uh, recording and playback heads independently of one another. Yeah, I want this so bad. But yeah... I don't know what what levels I would be at for various models here. I guess it would depend on what I could find at the time. So yeah, 10,000 subscribers. Maybe I'll try for a ZX-7 or ZX-9 or, or something like that. The CR-7, I don't know. I'll have to figure that out as I go along with my channel. Anyhow... For now, I'm concentrating on the big IY units because those are Nakamichi level without carrying Nakamichi prices. So enough talk. I'm done talking. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to play for you another cassette capture off the BX150 so you can see exactly how good that thing sounds recording. When I did the video for Saturday, I did three tracks. One got a copyright hit. That was the first one. Second one did not. And the third one is the one I used on the channel. But the second one is so good, I have to use it somewhere. So it's going in this video.